The Mitsubishi L200 is 40 years old, so what better way to celebrate that anniversary than with a brand new series? So say hello to Series 6 of the Mitsubishi L200 pickup truck. Now, most reviewers would be very happy with just showing you around one vehicle. Job done. But I am not most reviewers. So I've got three. I've got the Warrior, the Barbarian, and the very top spec Barbarian X. Now I've been lucky enough to drive this vehicle in a variety of locations and conditions, including deep mud, gravel, and snow. And this vehicle handled it all without breaking a sweat. But it does have one more trial to get through. The Vanarama Road Test. Now, before we get going, I'd just like to say that I sincerely hope you enjoy this video. And if you do, please like it, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you get notified every time we post content just like this. And don't forget that if you are in the market for a brand new van or pickup truck, head to vanarama.com and check out the deals. Now, with all that said and done, let's start where we always do with the front end. Now, the Series 6 feels like it's grown up a little bit. The Series 5 was very car-like, and actually you can sort of see echoes of the old series up top here, but down here, well, this is all Series 6, and it might look a little bit familiar, and that's because it is. These chrome details look exactly like the ones you'll find on the front of the Outlander, and I think it looks really great. And to be fair, between these three vehicles that we have here, there's not a lot that kind of gives away what trim level it is, apart from on the Barbarian X. Now, if you take a look at the front here, you'll notice that you've got parking sensors either side of the registration plate and a camera down here as well. And for those of you with keen eyes, you might have spotted that these fog lights are LEDs. However, on the side, there are some other similarities too. Now, they all get the same 18-inch alloy wheels underneath those lovely new square wheel arches. They get the same door sills, the same chrome door handles, and in fact, the same chrome wing mirrors, although the ones on the Barbarian X just a little bit different. These ones have cameras mounted on the bottom. Now what they do is they work together to create a 360 degree composite image that you can view inside on the infotainment screen, and I'll show you that later. In fact, one of the only ways to tell the difference between the trim levels is to check out the decal on the bottom of the door. This one says Barbarian X, that one says Barbarian, and the white one is a Warrior, so it says Warrior on the side. And there are some similarities around the back too. Now, for all intents and purposes, the tailgates are exactly the same. On the Barbarian X, however, you get soft drop. Very nice addition. On the Barbarian, this one just happens to have a canopy fitted. That is something we can fit for you in our workshop if you so desire. This one's tailgate is also soft drop, but on the Warrior, you don't get soft drop, so be ready ooh, to catch that when it drops. Now, even the loading bays are relatively similar. They're effectively a 1.5 by 1.5 box. It's about 0.5 meters deep, and the canopy adds about the same, but tapers towards the top. And that's the point. Even the engines are similar. I mean, all three of these vehicles have the same 2.3 liter diesel engine that's Euro 6 emission standard. They even have the same 21 litre AdBlue tank that Mitsubishi say only needs refilling every 12,000 miles. So where are the differences? They're on the inside. Let me show you what I mean. <clears throat> now, the jump from standard trim level to this one, Warrior, is quite a big one. It's everything you need from a modern day pickup truck and barely anything that you don't. It's almost like a benchmark. Everything you'd expect to find in a modern day pickup truck is available at the Warrior trim level. So what do I mean by that? Well, I mean the seats may look a bit basic, but they're hard wearing. Then that's great. I love this kind of honeycomb effect on the top of them. It's really nice. It sets off the interior quite nicely. It's no nonsense. Even the steering wheel looks absolutely packed with controls. You feel like there's a lot of stuff that you've got control of from your fingertips right here. You've even got paddle shifting. And there's a great big, very nice, clear, full color driver information display right in front of you. It's perfect. The big infotainment screen is also packed with functionality. And the connectivity is exactly what you'd expect. You've got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and you can even hook up through Bluetooth if you like. You've got your aircon, you've got hazard lights, you've got your seatbelt indicator, and yeah, there's a few blank buttons, but of course there is. There's gonna be blank buttons because there's two trim levels above this one. In the Barbarian trim level, you start to get a few more toys. For example, check out the door sills. They're fully illuminated and they have the word Barbarian tattooed onto them. 
You can't have failed to have noticed the full leather interior with perforated seats, the fact that the front two seats are now fully heated, that your driver's seat is electrically adjustable, and that down by your drive selection control, you've got hill descent control and terrain selection. And for your friends and family in the back, there are now USB sockets so they can charge their phones. And yeah, there are still a few blank buttons, but there's one more trim level to go. And they really mean it when they say that X go and give it to you because at the Barbarian X trim level, you get a heated steering wheel. It's something you really miss when you don't have one. Check out the leather seats as well. I mean, they have obviously been smashing the gym. They must have Ibiza next week because look at these. These inserts are suede and they're even called six pack inserts. Now at the Barbarian X level, you also get some additional technology. Down here, you've got your button for blind spot monitoring and alerts flash up on your wing mirrors whenever something enters one of your blind spots. Next to that, you've got your parking sensor button. You can turn it on and off, but to be quite honest, why would you want to? You've also got a nice little button up here which turns on your cameras. On the left hand side, you've got your full 360 degree view and on the right hand side you've got your rear view coming out the camera that's on the tailgate handle. Press it again and the view on the left changes to the one that you're getting from your offside wing mirrors camera. Now that means you can see whether you're too close to the curb and help you avoid from curbing those lovely alloys. Now look, I guess the point is that all three of these vehicles and all three of these trim levels are great. The Warrior trim level has loads of toys and the Barbarian X has even more. Everything you'll need for a long journey, no matter what you're up to. It's even great in the back. Let me show you. And as you can see, in the back of the Barbarian X, the seats are rocking the six packs too. But there's lots of space and you'll find that this is exactly the same across all three of them. This is the headroom you get. This is the legroom you get. It's just like sitting in the back of a luxury SUV. And they all have these excellent armrests, which have two cup holders. And you know me and cup holders, these ones are really good. So there you go. It doesn't really matter which one you go for when it comes to the back seat. I mean, the Barbarian and the Barbarian X do get the USB sockets, but you've seen how they all compare to each other. And speaking of comparisons, let's see how the L200 compares against some of the other pickups available in the marketplace right now. First up, the Ford Ranger. Now, at the moment, this tough ombre of a pickup is incredibly popular. And as you'll see, it too has a lot of competition to deal with, but it's winning. And if you are watching this review, the chances are you've already watched one about the Ford Ranger, but the L200 may just turn your head. The Nissan Navara. A tough interior and excellent options in the cabin set the Navara apart from its competition. If you're in the market for one, the Tecla trim level is where you should start. The Fiat Fullback. It's a great value pickup truck platform sharing with the Mitsubishi L200, so you know it comes from good stock. Well worth a look in my opinion. The Isuzu D-Max. Now, there's something understated about the D-Max, and that's fine. It does the job of a pickup without making a fuss, and farmers love it. That is high praise indeed. The Mercedes-Benz X-Class. Now, this one shares some bits of the Nissan Navara and meant that Mercedes were able to build a luxury pickup on the bedrock of a top-performing pickup platform. However, we do know now that it's not hanging around for long. The Toyota Hilux. Now, we're several generations in and the Hilux continues to perform incredibly well. It's got the usual high Toyota build standards and the tech bundled in there is as user-friendly as ever. And finally, the VW Amarok. Now, the VW brand is incredibly strong and is clearly on show in the Amarok pickup truck. It's big and comfy at speed, so much so you'd easily mistake it for an SUV's drive quality. And there you go. While there might be a lot of competition out there for the L200, this latest series builds on the previous in ways I really didn't expect it to. It feels like a totally new proposition and Mitsubishi deserve real credit for creating this excellent vehicle. So there you go, all the competition being faced by the L200 right now, but who gives a fig about the competition when we have three L200s to choose from? Oh, which one's it gonna be? Well, I think considering the heated steering wheel and the seats are already nice and warm, we're gonna take the Barbarian X out for a drive. I feel like I'm taking advantage of pretty much every bit of technology in this car right now. Parking sensors are working great. My bum is so warm, it's absolutely lovely. My hands are warm because the steering wheel is all heated. It's just nice, it's really nice. Wow, that steering wheel is warm. That, I've literally just turned it on and already it's really warm. On a winter's day, that would be absolutely lovely. No frostbite for this young man. I mean, I say young, I'm obviously 
take them or not. So I think we've gotten to know each other enough that I can be open. When I first saw pictures of the new Mitsubishi L200, I thought to myself, ah, oh, they've made it look like the Outlander. And like, how predictable, right? But actually, the more I saw it, the more I fell in love with it. I thought it looked really futuristic. It looked like the whole front end had been pursed in. It looked more snub-nosed. It looked more like a pickup truck than it had ever looked before. I sort of would look at pictures of the Series 5 against the Series 6 and just think, yeah, do you know what? The Series 6 is the one I want to be driving. And now I finally have. And I've gotten to drive this in all sorts of environments. I'm absolutely flabbergasted with how good it is. Not only is it a very clever pickup truck from a technological point of view, it's actually a very, very sound platform, capable of handling any environment, any location, almost any surface. And I'm sitting on a seat that has a six pack and it's really comfortable and my bum is warm and my hands are warm and I can hold on with one hand and I can feel like I'm in control even though I just feel like I'm in the lap of luxury. It's really, really good. Now there are other pickup trucks on the market that do manage to do that as well. Ford Ranger Wild Track is very good at making you feel like you're in the lap of luxury. The leather interior is really, really nice. The engine is bigger, it's a 3.2 litre on the Ford Ranger. But on this, this 2.3 litre engine, it's powerful, but because it's not as big, the whole vehicle feels really, really light. There's a little bit of wobble at the top end, like you expect from a pickup truck because of how they're sprung, but it's not a deal breaker. So here we are at the all important hill test. So here we go. The automatic gearbox is picking up very nicely. It's obviously holding me in a relatively low gear. I just heard a very slight shift down there. Yeah, I can feel power coming through. It's nice and responsive. It's very constant. So as I said, there's no difference in engines. They are all 2.3 litre diesel engines with AdBlue. I did mention already that they have an AdBlue tank that is 21 litres in capacity. 21 litres. That pretty much ensures that this vehicle is one of the cleanest on the roads, right? I mean, that much ad blue? Is anyone going to correct me? No. It's a huge tank, absolutely gigantic. Mitsubishi say 12,000 miles before you need to fill it up. That's phenomenal. What I have noticed is that Mitsubishi obviously want you to hold the steering wheel in a certain place because that's where the heating elements appear to be. So the steering wheel is a clock, the heating elements appear to be at eight and four, and there are actually sort of big, kind of hand grippy areas. There doesn't appear to be a heating element at the top of the steering wheel at all. It just seems to be on these side bits and there's nothing on the bottom. So yes, yeah, they're just under there. Nice. Well, I'm not expecting them to heat the entire steering wheel, but it would have been nice to have a little bit of warmth up the top at 10 and two. Because after all, that was when my driving instructor said you had to hold the steering wheel, but maybe nowadays it's like, no, four and eight, that's where you hold them. Enjoy yourself, go four and eight. Don't worry about 10 and two. Eh. Applying a little bit of power by pushing down the accelerator actually almost seemed to flummox the automatic gearbox just for a moment. It was anticipating and trying to work out which gear would be the best, but when it finally picked it, it just sped off. It's really, really cool. Downsizing to a 2.3 engine from the 2.4 liter engine that were in the series five, doesn't seem to have made a jot of difference. But I guess the all-important question is, has the Series 6 improved on the Series 5? And personally, I think it has. It feels less cobbled together on the inside. I do remember from the Series 5 review that we shot recently that I just felt like it was bits put together. Even the illuminated running boards with the blue writing and the LEDs underneath them just felt a bit kind of shoved in, whereas in this one, they actually feel like more a homologous part of the vehicle. The seats feel right. They don't look like they've been shoved in. They look like they're part of the vehicle. And even to the left and right of the centre console, there are pads to rest your leg against. So if you are going off-road or you're bumping around, instead of in the previous versions where your leg would bump into that whole console the whole time and get a big bruise down the side, it's all nice and padded now. It just feels a little more thought out. 
And because Mitsubishi are trying to bring their pickup trucks into line with their excellent SUV offerings, they're using all that expertise and putting it into this. The Series 6 is the result of 40 years of design experience being poured into a vehicle. And you can tell everything is refined from the drive to the engine, to the seats, even the ones with six packs, to the tech, to all the stuff, to where it is. It's not in stupid places, it's in easy to access places. and Everything is fast and responsive. You've got tons of information at your fingertips and tons of control as well. I was really, really struggling to say anything bad about this vehicle. Even the cup holders are good. I just don't have a niggle. I don't have any niggles about this particular vehicle. It drove well through mud. It drives well on tarmac. It drove up a ski slope. It just handles everything that gets thrown at it. It doesn't worry. It doesn't break a sweat. No issues. Lane departure warning just told me off there. <laughs> There's a little bit of wobble at higher speeds, but I'm pretty sure a lot of that will be compensated for when you're carrying its full load. Because it's a pickup and because it's a commercial vehicle, it can carry over a thousand kilograms, which is excellent. And if you wanted to do a bit of towing, if it was unbraked towing, oh, there you go, the LDW warning there just coming up. If you did a bit of towing, 750 kilograms is what you could do unbraked. And three and a half tons of brake to triple axle trailer towing is what this vehicle is capable of. That's a lot of weight. I mean, that's big. When we were at the test track at Silverstone, we were towing another L200 with an L200 on a triple axle trailer. That was pretty cool. I wasn't very good at it. I think I could get better though. Pretty positive I could get better. So how do we finish this one? Well, the 6 Series of the Mitsubishi L200 is just an incredibly capable pickup truck, able to do all the nitty gritty stuff that you'd expect a modern day pickup truck to do, while making you feel like you're sitting in a luxury SUV. Now I know in the context of modern pickup trucks that's not a revelation, but this one absolutely nails it. But which one are you going to go for? Well, you could go for the Warrior. No nonsense, everything you need. What about the Barbarian? A few extra bits of luxury and a few more bells and whistles. Or what about the Barbarian X? Literally everything you could want from a modern day pickup truck in one package. The L200 you go for is gonna be decided by how much money you wanna spend. But actually, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter which one you go for because they're all Series 6 L200s. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, subscribe to the channel and click the bell to get notified when we post more content just like this.